Welcome back, everybody, ahead of game number three. What could be the final game in this series? We might be, M-Test, one game away from finding out the first grand finalist in this Division 2-3 promotion tournament. Yeah, I mean, it's looking it's looking currently really, really one-sided, right? I mean, in Volume World, they came right off the bat in game one. They got ahead early game. And they almost threw it, but I mean, realistically, right, even directly after that play where they gave an ace over to, to Orgles, they just made a play of their own getting that Nasher for free. So we've been giving them some slack, but they've been looking so confident in both of these games, and I'm really looking forward to see where this next game takes them. Can Orgles kind of clash back and uh, get a drop that is really uh, comfortable for them, where they can actually play into the hands um, of Invulnerable, or are they going to crumble and fall out and it's just going to be another 3-0 for Invulnerable? And we've got to look at the early game because game one, game two, we have seen just in a super aggressive early jungle pick come out from the side of invulnerables and then them have the necessary effect on the map to get this team rolling. All the while Citron on the other side is wanting to scale up, is wanting to farm up, is wanting to get to the point where they can be this big carry. And invulnerables are just saying, nope, we're not going to let you do that, bro. Yeah, I mean, Helis has been playing so well, right? Only his ganking junglers in the early game, communicating well with his solo nerds. And on this Jarman, I mean, he really, really popped off. I mean, he went for the blue buff into level 2 gank bot, into level 2 gank mid. They got double kill there. He managed to get level 3 actually off of a minion in that mid gank, which kind of turned the gank around. And then, I mean, Usul came down from Camille on the top line priority. And after that, I mean, we already feel, um, Brack, that this game was kind of falling apart for, for Orgles, right? Off those two kills. Victor got to stabilize the lane. Usul got so ahead uh, on that Camille, and it was just looking really, really rough uh, from Moilus. Well, we are a couple of moments from getting into Champion Select here, but uh, in the meantime, continue to think of... Uh, do you think Citron just has to give up on these like hyperscaling picks? It just seems like, yeah, the Hellish again and again is just kind of having his number in this early game. We saw in game two on the Jarvan, three ganks, three lanes inside of five minutes. And just from that, you had three winning lanes from Invulnerables. Like, where does Citron even try and play? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? I think for starters, you have to look at the draft, which we are in. I'm kind of happy to see that. The, I was actually going to talk about this, that you have to ban out both of these younglings, right? There's the Johnny and the Vi, because Hellish has been proving himself to, to be able to, to be so proactive on these kind of junglers. So they're all taking out those on the board, the Fiora as well, going to be taken out. So the Shen, as you were talking about, still being 100% banned <laughs> from Invulnerables and the Belveth as well as, as the, well as the Olaf, not going to be in the hands mm -hmm. of Citron. So I already like this matchup uh, that is happening so far. Heimerdinger and Senna can really uh, look to... Uh, they, they, they can stand their ground on their own if they don't get abused like first three, four to four levels, right? But Heli, does he have another proactive jungler up his sleeves? He's not going to go for it this time around. So this gives an option for or uh, Orgles to ban out another two proactive junglers and really, really looking to make this game as even as possible in the laning phase. Let's see, perhaps Trundle might be another thing that they want to look to ban away. But talking about this Senna Heimerdinger bot lane, it is something we saw them pull out against Formulation Gaming in their match on Saturday. We saw Kang go for the, far, the uh, fasting variant, so we're expecting Magic Pants to do the lion's share of the farming, get the lion's share of the gold. And of course, if we get to that later point, if the scaling is allowed to happen for the side of Orglis, that does mean that the turrets, the rockets, that especially the uh, upgraded stun grenade can have a massive effect in these big later game fights. Yeah, I uh, for sure, right? And Rotu is going to lock in that Yasu into that Silas. I mean, really, really respectable. There is, he's been kind of dominating in both of these lane fights, but his confidence is still standing strong as he locks in that Yasu. And uh, really, really respectable there uh, coming in from him. I really want to see him have a good performance on this pick. It's so important, right? That means that Invulnerable is just going to ban out, kind of knock up champions. The Diana goes out, the Malphite goes down, and Citron, he really has to dig deep right now. Does he just go for the Hecarim, which is a similar style champion? Right? Can't really achieve much the first six levels. Has to just farm. Your lane cannot really uh, get any help whatsoever 
and this just gives Hellish another opportunity. Maybe he locks in the Vi, maybe he locks in something else that can really be practical early. And maybe even the Lee scene, I mean, we could look to see uh, the Graves also like... being open. Yeah, I mean, so many things open, right? I'm excited to see what Hellish looks. I don't know if Graves sounds like a Hellish champion to me. That yeah, certainly we'll is something that does sort of fit that wheelhouse poppy that can get early ganks down, that can be this rock in those team fights, make it really hard for the side of the August Clash team to get anything done in these major fights. Really, really good for trying to shut down that Yasuo, who obviously is going to want to dash all every second as long as there's a target within range. Yeah, uh, I mean, for sure, right? I mean, the, the up factor here from Invulnerable is as well. They first picked the Silas, right? But it's not Root 2 mm -hmm. this game. Where he doesn't have any, like, ultimates to steal, right? I mean, Silas has the Heimerdinger, the Senna, even the Yasuo, if they get some knockup. The Hecker in ulti as well is super reliable of fears on this style of this game. And uh, he has, like, a really, like, a tons of options, right? And the Poppy, as you said, a really Ooh. good pick for Hellish. He's going to be able to be but practical. Chaos. But the Vladimir... Ooh! Chaos. I mean, that two is... Two games, two wins. He picked it out twice against Formulation Gaming in games one and two, and he showed up huge on this champion. This is... This is... If you were looking for pocket picks, Officer... That pick right there, the Chaos Vladimir is something to be feared. And I am not sure how well positioned Uzal is to deal with that on this chase. Yeah, I mean, he has to has to be able to held out for his own, right? But once again, I mean, you, you're kind of thinking that these uh, these top lane matchups, maybe Chaos can get an advantage on the Uzal, but once again, Hellish is being going to be the proactive one on that Poppy. Wait, Rutu hasn't swapped over to... Maybe it's something fishy is going on there, because Rutu was still on the Senna. And Kang was still on the on the Yasu. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, maybe there was some graphic bug. I mean, we're gonna have to see. I would not expect the Senna to be playing mid lane this game, uh, but uh, I would hope not. <laughs> yeah, I would hope uh, not for Orgla's sake. I'm sure admins will tell us if something has gone awry, but um, for now. We will wait to load on in. Based on the compositions we see, not necessarily who is playing what. M test. How are you feeling about? OCT's chances to try and start leveling up the series, to look to get that reverse sweep to happen. I mean, we said that they needed to like kind of throw everything out of the board, right, and come up with something new, and they have been doing so. I mean, Chaos on the Vladimir, as you said, uh, has had two games on it, 100% win rate, and maybe if he can get out of the laning phase, this is something I've been saying time and time again, but if Vladimir can get out of the laning phase, he will be able to scale to inf infinity, right? And on this champion as well, you can kind of hold down on your own. It's it's quite a strong lane. You you can maybe you don't get an advantage in the one we want, but uh, uh, actually let me just okay. dismiss everything I said. Rutu is on the Senna, so I guess Kang, Kang is gonna go into the mid lane. Kang is gonna play mid lane. Wait, uh, wait, what? Hold on, hold on. From what we see here, Magic Pants is going mid lane on the Heimerdinger, and it's going to be Senna Yasuo bot lane. Oh my well, god. Well, M tests, you told us that you needed, or uh, Orglus needed to throw out the book coming into this game three. They have not just thrown out the book, they have thrown it onto a pile and set it alight. Yeah, they have for sure, but Rotu oh, no. making his debut on bot lane. He's just going to get taken out. The humanity is invulnerable once again. They can't oh. keep getting away with this. They find the level one. They're going to give that extra XP onto Fierce as well. Actually, no, it goes onto Uzol to give him a slightly easier time in this level one in this top lane. Yeah, I mean, that's just precursor that he's going to... Most likely, unless he's shared it with too many people, to get level 2 on that first wave is going to be super crucial for the top side. But, I mean, yeah, we had to talk about this, right? Magic Pants locks in the Heimerdinger with the Senna. Everyone thinks uh, that this is going to be a Senna and Heimerdinger bot lane, right? Where Heimerdinger can just farm, they have a lot of poke that they can work with. But now Magic mm -hmm. Pants is stepping into the mid lane, into the Silas. And this is actually a really good matchup for Heimerdinger in, uh, on paper, right? Silas can't really dash what? in on you, you just put down your turrets and you have so much more damage to deal with. Yeah, he tries to dash onto you, you just drop the stun grenade, and then all the turrets go. Yo, heard you were talking mad. <laughs> heard you were talking mad crap, brother, as they fire those lasers through. It's going to be, yeah, very difficult, I think, for Fierce to do all that much. And of course, with it being a Heimerdinger, it's just auto-shove. There's not yeah. really anything, like, Silas can do to try and contest this push. 
Yeah, I mean, Hellish has to uh, kind of bail out this mid laner here, and he has been doing it time and time again, right? So maybe he looks to do it. But Citron Oop, goes Citron. for the early mid. Hellish doesn't have this might. Citron is just gonna get this Grom for free, and uh, not really what to see from Hecker. But oh my god, oh, so hard. The turret going down prevents the abduct coming out from Fierce there. Lovely mechanics, but yeah, as you say, Citron didn't go for buff first, went chickens in to invade the enemy Gromp, steals away that camp, and considering Hellish was the one who got that first blood, that's a very nice way to try and, you know, give him a bit of a slap on the wrist, make sure he doesn't get rolling too hard in this early game. Yeah, I mean, let's be clear, right? This is not something you see on Hacker often. You don't really invade early unless you're for sure and know that you can get something in a Citron. He knew it, man. I mean, I guess he knew that Hellish didn't have his smite. He used it on the blue buff, so gets that Gromp to himself. It's gonna be one camp up, and, uh, yeah, this mid lane is going as we were expecting, right? I mean, Medic Pants already almost 10 CS up, and Fierce is less than half HP under his tower. And uh, as we were saying, right, he has to get bailed out in this game by Hellish. He has to get uh, get a couple of ganks, but it's a bit hard when Medic Pants knows now that Hellish is on the bot side. On top of that, look at the push coming in this bot lane. Piscolo and Sander do not give a singular damn about this Yasuo Senna lane. They are shoving them in. They are forcing them to burn pots, forcing them to hide underneath their tower. And we already see that uh, Hellish trying oh. to make his way towards the bot side. Kang tries to go forwards. Flash is available, but Rothew is going to be the target. Hellish picks up another one. The flash is still available for Kang, and he's going to have to use it, though. And this is going to be a dire early lane for the bot side of Orglas. And once again, Hellish is at the right place at the right time. I mean, OCT, uh, Orglas, their, their wave was was pushing towards the enemy. They needed help there, but once again, Citron is on that tempo jungle. He can't really afford to, to lose any sort of time for himself where he tries to help out his laners. And Hellish is, as I said, on the right spot at the right time. Gets another kill under his belt. Kang has to use his flash as well. And this Yasuo and Senna lane, while it's strong on paper, with, with the fact that they've been double punished now in the early game, it's uh, looking really, really rough for them. Kang double CS down so far. It's not looking good, but we'll see if the uh, upset apple cart with how uh, Orglas have chosen to draft this game turns to their favor the later the game goes. Obviously, we're waiting a while for Yasuo to hit that power spike, for Senna to get some souls, to get some of that extra range, make it so that these fights become a lot easier. Because one thing that does stand out to me is that several of these members, specifically, well, Fierce in particular, is going to have a horrible time in any of these fights. You gotta go forwards into a Heimerdinger Senna and a Vladimir. It's uh, looking a bit rough for the side. Yeah, I mean, let's say that for sure, right? I think the, the up factor that Fierce has though is that he can he can steal so many great ultimates. He can steal, uh, I mean, obviously I've, I've, I've been saying this, right? if he steals the Hecarim ultimate, he can be the engager for his team. And while maybe it's not gonna be as comfortable for him to play this fight, because glamorous. as you were saying, Cashing into Hyper Towers is not gonna be something that you want to do. But I'm just looking at these comps right now and I I kinda realize that I mean OST they for sure have the scaling factor, right? They have Yasu Senna, Heimerdinger, Vlad Hekarim. The only problem I see is that their only sort of engage is Magic Pants uh, kinda big bomb, the the RE combo, and Citron's uh, Citron's ultimate as well, right? But on the side of Yeah, Onslaught of Shadows as well. Yeah. One thing I want to point out though on test. Top lane. Uzo is getting Nope! <laughs> As I say it, Uzo was struggling in this top lane. Chaos looks to go for the dive, go for the punish, and he just gets slapped down by the tower, doesn't go into pool in time, isn't able to pick up that solo kill, and the advantage in top lane is completely lost. Yeah, that is unfortunate. I mean, Chaos, once again, he has the confidence to go for this kind of play, but maybe not the execution today, maybe not the best, but as I was saying, I mean, they have the scaling factor, but I mean, in, in Vulnerable, they have so much range to work with. They have the Poke Wars, they have the Jace as well. It's so hard for OCT to get a fight going. They need to be able to kind of secure one or two drakes in this early game, but it's so hard when, uh, once again, in Vulnerable, they are, they are almost 2k ahead in this early game. They are, and despite this complete swap around from the side of Orglas, as you say, it's the scoreline 
you could be forgiven for thinking this is very, very similar to game one, game two, invulnerable. Again, finding those angles, finding that early aggression to make it just so difficult for these lanes to be executed in a clean fashion from the side of all this clash team. Yeah, I mean, it's looking clean, right? That's for sure. And Fierce, well, as you were saying, he's got to struggle in this 1v1 mid matchup. He doesn't really have to accomplish anything. He has to not get dove, not die 1v1, try to pick up as much form as possible. And he is, his team is going to pay dividends for that. Hellish now looking on the bot side once again. Kang still doesn't have no clash. Thankfully, the wave is pushing in right now. Kang and Rothu do not have to play that far up the lane. But... Yeah. That's good for them. Still, I mean, <laughs> That's 25 them, CS rather. difference between the carries. I mean, this is to be expected, obviously, range versus melee match. I mean, Fierce actually doing some pretty considerable damage to Magic Pants, but unfortunately, you can't really go all the way forwards because if you do, you risk getting just a big turret or a grenade to the face. Yeah. But that, that, that's the that's the good thing for Fierce, right? that's what I was saying. He doesn't really have to, to do anything in his lane. I mean, he gets a couple of cues there to make sure that Manipites cannot go for an all-in all of his own. And the wave state is going to be pretty much even. He's down 8 CS, this is pretty much what you expect right, in this matchup. And Fierce, he has been holding his own quite well, I would say, in this matchup. Because as we were saying, it's not an easy one for the Silas. Certainly not. Chaos. Uzo gonna try and find the engage onto Chaos. Already uses the pool. Flash was used as well, though. Oh. Alish trying to get the damage down, but he gets turned into a Hemoplake. Citron is here, and it looks like the turnaround, the punish, will be there for Hellish this time. And that is a shutdown across to Citron. Orglis Clash team actually able to make something happen in the early game this time around. Yeah, Citron is there at the right place at the right time. I, I would say, I I'm gonna say for once, because it hasn't been the most practical one, but there he gets a counter gank where Hellish is just going way too deep, tries to get the flash done onto Chaos on this Vladimir, but doesn't get it in the end. He gets taken down by Citron. His herd is gonna go down as well, and this is the first time in this game, where, uh, in this series, where OCT pick up the Herald. It's the first time this series that OCT picks up an early objective, I think. They did get first strike in game one, but I believe that was a post 10 minute affair, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I mean, they have not been uh, getting the, the bigger stick uh, in that regard for sure. But now, Citron is looking, I mean, healthy on his Hecarim, right? He has gotten past the hardest phase of Hecarim, which is the early game where you don't have your flash. You're so abusable if you get invaded on, but he was making the invades <laughs> himself. He now finishes the first item as well, and even though it's not a mythic, he's looking really, really strong on the second. 25 seals up, got that shot down, now has the Herald as well. Let's see where he picks it up. Gotta keep an eye on this one though, because going for the build that he has chosen to go for. Oh, then Lion Fist is looking to try and make the play here. Two big turrets in the mid lane. Magic Pants not quite able to get the damage down, and Hellish is on the chase. One more hit, one more hammer shock will be all it will take. Smite goes down, one more slam, and that's a third picked up for Hellish. Yeah, well play there from him. Well, well, I mean, Fierce, he went really, really deep there, but he knew that he had the backup from his team, and Magic Pants did not. He has to use both his summoners and he's gonna lose this whole wave under his tower, doesn't have that teleport, but I mean Citron is gonna be happy about this one, he's just gonna pick up that whole mid lane farm and he's gonna oh. almost have the double Don't CS mind if I of this. Yeah, I mean he's to carry this game, like why not? <laughs> One thing I, well, well, what I was going to say before that mid lane play happened is this build from Citron is going to be potentially something that could be a concern. Sander trying to look to get the damage down onto Kang will get a hit with the Soul Flare, but nothing really much to write home about. And back to this Hecarim, third time's the charm. Going for Umbral Glaive into what I assume to be a Manamune slash Muramana. There is a considerable risk for this Hecarim to try and go in in a team fight and just get exploded. Yeah, and this has kind of been the flavor of the bomb build for the Hecarim and Solky. I mean, these guys go for the Umbra Glaive, they go for the Duck Blade as well, and they try to one shot as many people as possible. And while if you get ahead, it works. In competitive play, it's a whole different beast, right? Because you're not gonna get as many random kills as you do in solo queue. It's really hard to set up fights with this, but I really respect it. I mean, if he can do it and he can get, once again, if he can get a stuff done in the beginning of the fight, the proc this duck blade, he does, this guy does, he will do so much damage, but he will get, uh, like, equally as one shot as he will to his enemies. Uh, yeah, once again, Hella showing himself towards the bot side. Kang ignited oh. up. Jenny Prochum comes through. Flash is available for Rot you. The Dawning Shadow as well will keep him up for the time being. And uh, I, a, a, a thought crossed my mind, and we now see the Balmy Cinder picked up, in fact. What if Citron were to go for a Fimble Winter instead? 
So you just have the, the umbral for the passive, for the vision, for the extra gold that you can get from you know, more freely being yep. able to clear the wards. And instead, go for chem tank Fimble Winter and look to be that big tank. Yeah, I mean, some sort of a hybrid, right? You have the damage. As I say, that though, Fear's doing a lot of damage on the Magic Pants, but not going to be able to take him out. As you were saying, those towers is in so much damage. But but yeah, I mean, Citron, he's going to have the damage to, to kill his opponents with this Umbra Glaive. He's going to have some lethality. I mean, the, the passive as well, as you were saying, able to clear out those vision, but also going for the tank build. I is pretty much the best of both worlds, right? He's not going to get one shot mm. but he's still going to one-shot people like Boris if he finds them isolated. Speaking of finding someone, he has found Uzal here, but Hellish is there to shepherd his top laner out. Chaos does come down for the play, but a little bit too late. Nothing to be found just yet. Let's do a quick check on the general game state. About a one and a half, two and a half K gold advantage for Invulnerables right now. And Herald has been secured by Citron here. Keep an eye on it though. The timer on it, pretty short. Gonna need to put it down pretty damn quickly. In fact, I think we see Citron show up in the mid lane to do just that. It has indeed been summoned on the mid lane, but it gets sent flying away by Hellish. I think Shelly should have enough time to amble down mid lane and still get the charge off. Will be Shelly yeah, I mean, trying to prevent was... this. It, looking for it, the Shelly is able to get the charge. Sander shows up towards mid lane, maybe try and get a catch onto Magic Pants, but it will not be so. Shelly is able to at least get that little bit of extra gold into the pockets of Orglis. Still one and a half K down, but it's something. Yeah, I mean, crucial oh, Magic Pants. Pants was not that flash. He's gonna get taken down. Sander gets the kill out of all people. Maybe not the one that you would want it on, but a kill regardless. Onto the Heimerdinger without flash. And yeah, as our producer kind of highlighted perfectly, that Herald was kind of timing out there. So he had to put it in mid. So really nice that they able to get that crash there, even though Sander was moving on his car. But now a fight in the bot side might drop as well. Mia Kang and Rot, who are on the run here. Hellish trying to find the damage, trying to find the angle in onto it, but will not quite be able to manage it. You can see a full step back. TP gets burned by Fierce to get him into the mid lane, and we're going to see a little bit of a quieter moment. Never mind, Citron spotted out. First turret went to Uzol there, uh, in your, uh, as you saw on your screen. And Citron is also able to make it away from this play. How are we seeing right now? 20 seconds until the next Drake comes up. I think this is still invulnerables to take. Yeah, I mean, Kang looks like he's needing a base right now. He has probably some gold to spend. Maybe he can finish up his Mythic and... Uh, Producer, I guess he has some gold to spend. Yeah, I mean, it looks he like some. he has almost 1k, so maybe as it gets to take it, but he's gonna stay for another wave. That gives Hellish time to kind of decide if he wants to go for the Drake or for the, the, the Dive Rider, but they are gonna play it That's safe yes. and patiently, as they've been doing pretty much the whole series. They're gonna get a Mountain Drake and maybe... This is the first time we get to see a Cloud Soul uh, in this series. I would not want that to happen. I'd rather <laughs> try to see an Ocean or, or an Inferno, right? Now so that you've said fun. it. Yeah. Now that you've said it. <laughs> Drake will get taken down. And it is Cloud oh. Soul falling onto the rift. You had to curse the M test. Uh, it's just a class. Honestly, look at this side from Invulnerables. In fact, from both of these sides. I think these are actually teams who both benefit yeah. quite heavily from actually, getting the Cloud Soul. Chaos actually, in particular. Yeah. And the yeah. Citron is going to really like to have that extra movement speed on ultimate. Helps them position, helps them look for those primary targets that they are wanting to hit onto. I mean, for sure, I feel like everyone does. I mean, as you said, like Sander can use it a lot of the time, and Usa living with his mm -hmm. ultimate can, and Citron is going to trade the Drake for the Herald, crucially, and uh, they might look to just uh, open up the mid lane tower with that one, right? But as you were saying, I mean, both teams kind of benefited from Cloud Cell. I, di I didn't even think about that. I was just I was just seeing, like, all the <laughs> hatred I have for this, uh, for this double, but <laughs> it's actually quite beneficial for both teams, and... As I'm saying, that you were actually right on the spot. He goes for that camp tank uh, on the tech cream. He's so strong right now, actually. Almost already has two items finished. Almost a tier fully stacked as well. And Citroen, maybe this is the third time's the charm. They are, in quotation mark, only uh, 2k down so far in this game. I think this is the, the least goal they have been down in, in almost this whole series in, at this stage of the game. Absolutely. And got signs of life coming out from the side of OCT. Let's see how they 
want to execute this going forwards. Top lane, Chaos, not having a good time, but Citron is able to find an angle in. Dawning Shadow comes forward. Pisclo is going to drop very low. Citron will just be able to walk him down now. The question is, can he get out of this? The healing from Rothu is going to do some good work, and I think the escape should be easy enough. Hellish is still looking for something, but the disengage will be good, and that's another kill picked up for the side of OCT, and more importantly, that's another kill on Citron. Yeah, but Fierce is here, and there it is. Go! That's the ultimate, the stolen last breath for Fierce. It tries to get this one forward. He's going to have to retreat, though. Can going very low. Hellish is going to try and oh. finish this one off. Fierce is the one to get it. Shirley, Shirley rather, will be able to get the charge onto the bot tier one. And right here, and Citron do feel confident enough to push this one forward. They will claim this first tower of their own Uzol. Having a slightly rough time running into magic times there. There's the catch onto Rot Hugh and is absolutely obliterated. Citron does have the movement speed to get away from this one, though. Vulnerables still more than kicking, still making sure OCT know that they are not winning this game. But not the, yet. I'm, yeah, I mean, after all this time, Chaos is still just farming on the top side, getting so much done while Usol is, I mean, obviously helping out his team, right? But they're kind of stabilizing right now. They got that bot tower. Citron got a kill as well. He is. So damn strong on this Hecarim, and I mean, Fierce, he hits a triple stun there on the Everfrost, actually quite nutty to watch, uh, but not gonna be enough to be, take Citron down, unless... 2k on top. Citron, he, Ultimate is literally seconds from coming back up, so there you go, yeah, Onslaught Shadows literally just came up as Hellish was gonna try and get that uh, catch, but... Nothing to come from it for just now. I was looking at the gold just a second ago. Production have brought it up. And there was a 2k gold advantage. Actually, more than a 2k oh, gold advantage. Citron no. gets caught. And with the Keeper's verdict, there will be no onslaught to save you this time. Another one picked up. And Hellish, you're just showing. If you want to try and carry this game, you've got to go through me. Yeah, I mean, he has, he has had to do that the entire series. I feel like Hellish just had his numbers pretty much the entire, but like in all three games, he has yeah. been kind of outperforming. And then once it's wrong, he's getting all the farm, he's getting all the resources. Hellish is the guy that he does not care. I mean, he just, he just goes for it regardless, even if the Hecarim is fed and he gets the kill. On top of that, I mean, Usol, this guy has tw 200, almost 220 CS before the 19 minute mark on this Jace. He's really, really mm -hmm. making this counter big worthwhile. Well, Hellish doesn't need to play for the farm. There's a bit of a catch onto Sander here, but the items are just not really there. Kang only has the shield bow to his name. There's no wind wall available here. Fred support will come in, but it's just too late. Uzo, however, will be spotted out, caught out, and taken down. The shutdown given across to Chaos. Much needed for this Vladimir to find his place in this game. He's getting... He got the uh, Mythic picked up. Got the Night Harvester. Getting on towards that all-important second item, Death Cat, at which point he could start to cause some real chaos in this game. Yeah, no I mean, this is uh, for sure going to be the breaking point for Vladimir, right? Around those two and three items, really important that he gets the kill as well. I mean, he's been falling behind in the one one matchup in this entire game, and just to be able to get that one kill and uh, a couple of waves under Yusuf's uh, tower is going to be taken down as well, and he gets uh, to breathe a bit in this one, and as you were saying, building towards that crucial Rabadons while Usol already has the Hex Drinker on this belt as well. Really smart pickup there when you're playing as double AP solo lanes in the Vladimir and the Heimerdinger. And we have to imagine now when this Drake is, is up and running that both teams are actually uh, looking looking keen to, to take it. I mean, Chaos is moving here as well without the hemorrhage to his uh, arsenal. The Hema Plague, yeah. Hema Plague, uh, yeah. So <laughs> the hemorrhage. Looking at ultimates available, it's all up for the side of Invulnerables, but it is going to be all the Splash team that find the uh, first damage onto the Drake. However, the turnaround is pretty quick. Sander is going to force Orgless to step away from this one, and it looks like it will be a complete disengage. Cloud Soul is on the cards five minutes away. Soul Point locked in for Invulnerables. And that's the thing, right? We've been talking about how OCT, their scaling is, is really, really insane if they get to, to do that, but you're gonna be forced to take this fight in five minutes' time against the Vulnerable, and are you gonna have enough time to finish out that Rabadon on Chaos, finish out the second item on Kang as well, and if you don't, it's just gonna be another uphill battle for, for Orgless, to be honest. Well, right now, the gold lead still around the 3k mark so not insurmountable if they can find a good angle right now they're just playing respectfully they're trying to hold out as long as possible and i think four minutes will be the time where they are forced to fight they don't want to just give the cloud soul across by that time i would expect to see a completed muramana 
on the side of Citron. Not going to go for the uh, for the Fimble Winter. Not going for the more tanky option this time around. Knows that he kind of needs to be the one to make it happen. And speaking of the devil, there is that completed normal. Yeah, and that's his... Ozol. Ozol. That's cheeky. However, Flash catches on. Hemo Plague will drop down. Rothew, however, dropping so low. Heal will not be enough. Uzal takes him down. And he's feeling confident enough to continue to step this one forwards. Chaos needs to get a transfusion for this to actually happen. Tides of Blood will be able to secure the kill. But Uzel drops him as well for a double. This Jace properly coming online. Two and a half items in pocket. And Zitron is trying to find Sander here. And it's, it's is gonna get taken out. I mean, it's one shot like this. Gonna jump on Piscolo, gets taken down, and Kang was trying to find the angle to help him out, but he is just going to be the one in need of help himself. Dropped down, and with the jungler dead, it is so trivial for invulnerables to turn and look towards this Baron now to really break and open break open this game three and really try and close it out for the side of all this. And Uzel activates his entire team by winning out on Advami 2 exchange. He trades himself for two members of Orgless. This is activating Varma to go for the play that they want. Fear is not done. He's going for many parts as well. Absolutely obliterated. Will eventually die. Turret's revenge does come through. But four members of Invulnerables will be able to secure the Baron. It will be all of that gold into their pocket. All of that pushing pressure across all three lanes available. They can one through one, they can one four. They have the lion's share of choices of how they want to try and close this game out. And the win con Inu Sol on this chase. I mean, he has been performing pretty much this entire series, had the upper hand on everyone on the side of Orgless, and he does it again. He finds that 2v1 outplay, securing that match for his team. And now, as you were saying, they can just set up that 4 1. They can just go push out sides as well and really play to get this tier 1 mid, the tier 2 bot as well, and maybe even the tier 2 mid before securing that Cloud Soul. Still two minutes on that. Uzal engaged upon by Citron, forces at the TP from Fierce. They may actually try and look to chase this one down on Slot of Shadows. Should disabuse them of that notion. In fact, Magic Pants is going to look to step forward, maybe try and catch an over-aggressive Uzal here. They do get the catch, but they just don't have the damage. Citron is removed. The jump forwards with the hijacked Onslaught of Shadows. Magic Pants is removed as well. Two more kills across to Invulnerable, and they're going to look to knock on these inner turrets. He's just too damn tanky at this point. I mean, has the Maw as well. It's not going to get one shot. Kang has oh, the Kang. flash, but it's not going to be able to take it Hasn't down. and gets able. CC chained by Invulnerable, and they are just wreaking havoc on Orgless this time around in the game. Chaos trying to get something done on the top side. Gets that shutdown tower to his name, but you can just imagine that they're going to lose everything here. The bot side getting siege, the mid getting siege as well. Orgless, they're losing everything. They are. Bottom inhibitor will be removed by Fierce and Uzol, who can then just rotate across, join their teammates in knocking down this mid tier two as well. So much more gold into the Invulnerable's pockets. 8k, well, 7.5k the gold advantage for them. 45 seconds until the Drake comes up. Cloud Soul on the cards for them. And Orgos have to fight them for this. Yeah. I mean, you have, you have to, right? As you were saying, well, you're actually, gonna have. Do they end test? <laughs> do they have to fight this? Maybe you have to give this up and try and just stem the bleeding until an elder. Yeah, I mean, maybe actually you look to do that, right? You can just look to give it away and you just, as you were saying, right? Just flip it at elder with the. But that, that's, that's the thing, right? I think you can do. Then, uh, in one, but they have. It's just gonna be so much harder to catch them. I mean, we talked about how they don't really have the best lockdown. And if you're playing against like Cloud Soul as well, yeah. I mean that everyone can benefit from. It's so hard to play through, but as you were kind of calling, I mean, they are going to drop it and try to trade for this tier two, but in Volvo, they already know this and they're looking to contest that as well. They're going to play on both sides of the map. Magic Pants is deleted. The chase is still on. Citron should be able to get away from this one. The flash forward from Fierce into the damage from Uzal. Double kill for the Silas. Onslaught of Shadows again. Just not enough. The dragon will be secured as well. Nothing can be done for the side of Orglus. And it feels like this series is slipping out of their hands. Yeah, I mean, it's it's for sure. I feel like at this point it was it was never in their hands. <laughs> they had to take it somehow, but but they've just been kind of dominated oh, by the burn. But like also you. goes in as well onto Roto. Doesn't have it's the flash. Just one There's no shot turret there. there. Oh my There's god! There's no turret there. 
<laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just as you were saying, right? It's just an illusion, these towers, what they can do. Visual and Usul, bug. he is five levels up on Route 2, level 17 currently on this Jace, and... I mean, he just, I just have to say, this is for sure like the MVP for me in this in this series. He's been performing alongside with Hellish. They've been taking over every single game that they've been in. And Invernable has been really good at stabilizing on the, on the other side. Now, looking at Magic Pants, he's still gonna one, one shot that as well. Not quite dead just yet. Will be finished off by Hellish. The immediate flash out as well. The damage coming forwards. Kang dropped incredibly low. Doesn't quite go down. Is finished off by the damage from Fierce. The stolen Hemo Plague. It's all on Chaos to get it done. Oh he flashes back goodness. onto the uh, fountain. Citron jumping forwards. Is able to get one onto Hellish, but it's traded back immediately. Four members strong. They just don't have the damage. They just don't have the gold in pocket to do anything. And it looks like Invulnerables will close this one out. Can Convincing 3-0 victory, and they will lock in their spot in the promotion grand finals. And what a way to do it in a convincing 3-0 fashion. Whoever is their opponent in the grand final has to be really, really, really scared. Usol on this Jace, he played three, uh, he played so much of the Camille and of the Jace as well. They have just been performing all around the board on the side of Invulnerable, and what a what a way to do it! I mean, a, a clean three zero, and everyone kind of stepping up to their plate, doing their job uh, for the team. Really nice to see from uh, the Swedish and UK org. Always, uh, you know, gotta be impartial, but I could tell there was a you know just a, a subtle bit of support there for the side of Invulnerables, <laughs> and they close it out with a plum. We were talking about it after game two. Orglas had to completely throw the playbook out. They did. And it worked a little bit. Even so, it felt like you know, the fact that Hellish sacked so much farm to just give it to Uzol, we saw, as you were saying, three levels up. There was a three level advantage in mid lane as well, fierce over magic pants. And past 20 minutes, you just, you just feel like it's game one, two over again. It feels insurmountable after that jittering game one where they gave away an ace, they got overconfident. Apart from a couple of moments, it just didn't feel like there was anything Oglas Clash team could do in this series. So fantastically played, of course, by the side of Invulnerables. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Oilers, they tried, right? They they went for a completely different draft in all of their games. They even put their support on mid lane in the last game, trying their hearts out to to take a win out of Invernable. But they were, they were just looking, I mean, they were just too good today. Well, what can I say? They were looking clean. They were, as you were saying, after that game one in that huge mistake, they, they learned from it instantly and they never made it again. So that's like the really important key factor as well to take away, right? They're improving as the theory goes. And when you're you're kind of winning all your lanes, you are going to mid game really strong, and then you're also learning from the from the kind of few mistakes that you're making. That's yep. really hard to beat. I mean, they just look class, absolute class today. Absolute masterclass indeed from Invulnerables. Hopefully, we'll be back in a few moments. Going to a short break just while we set up an interview with one of the victorious members of Invulnerables. Don't go anywhere. I'm sure they'll have plenty to say when we come back in a few.
welcome back, everybody. I am uh, half ahead of a brackish Brit. There we go. We are here with an interview with the victorious Sander support of Invulnerables Esports. Welcome back once again. We had you for an interview uh, in your last series as well. How does this series stack up compared to your match against Carolyn Anna? I mean, <clears throat> I'm gonna be honest, guys. Um, we went for we wanted the, a warm up before this because we were like, oh, enemy jungle is kind of good. So we went a few games Earth, but now that I'm thinking about it, I think the Earth games might have been the officials, and this was the warm up for oh. finals. So oh. that, uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, no, but, no, but uh, I think we played really well. We fixed a lot of the mistakes that we had um, versus K5, um, which contributed a lot to our like winning hard this game. Yeah, I kind of want to ask you a bit about like that those kind of few mistakes that you made because. I mean, obviously, you kind of gave them a shot to win in game one, where you got yeah. this. Uh, but right off that, you got Nasha for yourself. Like, I just want to ask, like, how was the communication? Like, when when you all died, like, what was the communication like, and what happened after? Like, hmm. I can give you like a short preview. It was basic, basic like stop inting. We are in, we are in the lead. Uh, you guys are feeding. Stop, stop inting, and we win. Like, we did, we the game was gonna win itself if we if we just didn't do this. So. Um, we had the Yumi, they didn't, so yeah, the game was like over in some sense. Yeah. By the, I, I feel like we should yeah. dock a win off you for that, by the way. Like, nah, 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 nah. They, they tried <laughs> to counterpick it with the zone. Of Remove trash, Yumi. But... Yeah, that, that's uh, unfortunate. Yeah, I kind of want to ask a bit about like kind of draft as well, because mm -hmm. you guys were really targeting. Uh, I'm actually rather, uh, you were just so. Uh, you were protesting so hard on these practice early game lines, like the Poppy, the Jarwin, and stuff like this, and Citron. But he was permanently just playing this tempo junglist. Was this something that you knew? Like you knew that he was gonna just play the carry junglist no matter what, and you can get away with just just spam ganking in the early game. Or like, what was your thought process when you kind of prepared for this best of five? I mean, um, preparing for it, we knew that their jungler is like their star player, or at least the, it's the player they always they're playing for with the resources of giving him Olaf and Belveth and jumps like this. But um, Actually, before before the game, I'm very good friends with Citron, so I can say this. Um, there was a bit of a beef, like he was flaming my jungler a bit, um, like, "Oh, you're not gonna get away with three O against us if you play like this against K5." <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. You can you can oh, say dear. that again to my face when going boots third on Hecarim. That's all I'm gonna say. I... <laughs> no, uh, it's all Elish, just... Elish took that personally, it seems. <laughs> yeah. Got a, a fantastic um, job done on, in all three games. It just yeah, felt like while Citron was trying to scale up, you were kind of just taking the rest of the game away from him. And looking forward to that. Obviously, after this very conclusive win, you find yourselves in the grand finals with a chance to make it to Div 2 should you win this next match. I feel like confidence is running high in the Invulnerables camp, so I'm not going to say how, uh, like, how uh, are you feeling about that. I'm actually going to ask, who do you think might be your opponents coming into that? Do you think Orglus bounced back? Because obviously they're going to be playing against the winner of Carolyn Erna versus uh, Form Formulation, yeah. which will be, I believe, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, you know, who think takes that? And then who do you think will eventually end up being your opponents in the Grand Finals? Um, so I think it's a pretty hard question because obviously we struggled a lot more against K5 than we did today, but it's hard to attribute that to were they really better, where did we improve a lot since then? Um, but like just intuitively, I think K5 were probably the better team than, than uh, Orglis that we played to get today. Um, I didn't see a lot of positives in my opinion, no flame. Uh, in formulation, maybe they just had an off day. I heard Vol Volders interview that he said they had an off day, they can bounce back as well. But, um, if I'm gonna be just honest, I think K5 uh, runs the lower bracket and takes it back to the final. All right, and with that, uh, we'll try and keep it short and sweet. Uh, we'll round up uh, the interview with that. Is there any shout outs you want to make before we uh, let you go on your way, Sander? Uh, I want to shout out my bro, Gist, always doing me in D1 when I was stuck in low, uh, keeping my mental high. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Lovely. And with that, 
that will uh, do it for us for the series. Any final thoughts, MTest? Looking forward to the remaining matches. Obviously, we have the entire lower bracket to go through before we get to the grand finals, where, as it stands, Invulnerables stand awaiting. Yeah, I mean, I sort of give a quick shout out to Sander. I mean, usually there's a lot of times where you interview a player and they are really... Uh, I mean, it's it's understandable, right? You're on broadcast, maybe you're a bit nervous, you're giving kind of the, the shortcut answers, but he was really feeling himself, kind of uh, flaming as well after a win like that. Uh, even th- <laughs> I, I just had to respect it. Uh, I really like the, the confidence that he brought. And obviously, you're going to be confident after a 3 0 like this. So, really looking forward to see who they're going to be facing uh, in that final matchup. Yeah, well, we will begin the journey to find that out tomorrow on stream. Carol and Erna will be taking on Formulation Gaming. Whoever loses is knocked out of the running for that spot in Division 2. That will be same time, same place, 6 CET here on the NLC LOL Twitch channel. And not sure who'll be there yet. Chances are probably not me. So uh, what I'll do is thank you, MTest, for being here, being fantastic accompaniment preventing me from losing my mind and my voice in this series. And uh, shout outs to Casual Cutie on production there. I know there were a few issues, but they trucked all the way through. We got ourselves to the end of a series and uh, what a series it was. Invulnerables really making the statement there. Yeah, I mean, I have to thank you as well, man. I mean, you said it yourself, it was kind of your first cast on on, on like the, the, the big stage of the series, so to speak, on the LSE cast. I think you did it justice for sure, so you should be really proud of yourself. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just really fun, man. So let, let, let's keep it up and uh, have a good one, guys. With that, we will send it for the end of the broadcast. Thank you all very much for coming along, for watching, for supporting the teams. And we will see you on the next NLC broadcast.